Hi, I'm Frida from New York, and this is my story. I've always been a lucky, beautiful child, born to parents who adored me. Dad worked as a scientist for a large corporation, and mom was a small fashion designer. Our lives were sailing smoothly until dad's company was robbed by a notorious criminal family, and he was forced to testify against them in court. Because of his brave testimony, the government awarded him a huge sum of money, but at a very dire cost. His testimony landed our lives in danger, and we had to move from one city to another each year. It caused a rift between my parents. I'm leaving with our child if you move to one more city! For God's sake, this is the last city. You're safe here. True to his word, that was the last city we moved to. After eight years of living there, my parents found their footing in the city and grew popularly wealthy with all the money they made from the court case. And I launched a modeling career that propelled me to stardom because of their influence. Freedom! 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 Everyone loved me, but the thing they loved most was my hair. I had the most perfect red hair. It was long, curly, and soft like silk. But one day, that changed. It all happened the night Dad had been working on a serious project in his lab when I walked in. Hey, Dad, can I borrow the limo for tonight? Out of the way, honey. I'm busy. He walked right into me, spilling the entire glass of his experiment on my hair. <gasps> my hair! I screamed and hurried out of the lab to the bathroom for a deep wash. The events of that night passed by in a blur, but when I woke up the next morning, I had the biggest shock of my life. My beautiful red hair was missing! Dad's chemicals had totally fried all the hair from my head, and Mom went ballistic. You ruined her perfect hair! You ruined everything! No one will hire her looking like that! I felt terrible for Dad, but I didn't say anything to help him. After all, he'd ruined my hair. I know my presence in the house isn't helping, so I'll leave to give you two some space. I'll miss you terribly. Dad left that day, and we never heard from him again. After a few days without him, I began to feel guilty about his absence from the house. I attempted to contact him, but each call went to voicemail. When I told mom, she sounded so unconcerned. Frida, I don't want to hear another word about your father. That man destroys everything he touches. After that day, I never mentioned Dad again. All I could do was secretly wish for his return. The week after Dad left, I had a professional shoot planned, and Mom made me put on a customized wig, exactly like my hair. I made this just for you, Frida. Never take it off. I kissed her goodbye and ran out to meet my super hot, wealthy boyfriend, Davies. He was my partner for the shoot. Something for my princess? Oh my god, it's so pretty! He was also a really sweet boyfriend. <laughs> he got me so many expensive gifts, I could barely keep count. The necklace was too heavy for my neck, but I endured the weight I'd do anything for him because he's so perfect. My name compliments your skin so well. During the shoot, everyone couldn't stop admiring how great Davies and I were together. You two look like the perfect power couple. Now stroke Frida's hair gently. Davies did as he was told, but I felt my wig coming off and stopped the shoot immediately with a lie. I think I have a headache. Let me take you home, babe. Davy's chauffeur drove us home, and during the drive, I felt it was time to confront Davies with the truth. I held his hand and looked him in the eyes with all the love I could muster. As I said, Babe, would you still love me if I changed? How? Like, say, I grew a mustache or extra legs or... <laughs> he placed his hand on mine and looked at me with concern. Your hands are shaking, babe. Tell me, what is it? The soothing way he spoke to me gave me all the confidence I needed, and I spilled the truth. I lost my hair. I took off my wig and explained everything to him. But to my shock, Davies instantly switched. He snatched his arm from mine and moved away like I was a monster. What happened to your beauty, Freda? I couldn't believe he reacted this way, since I always believed that true love should always be kind. I think we should break up. I can't be seen with you looking like that. So you never loved me? Oh, come on, Freda. You know we're together because we're perfect for the media. And now what's the point? You're a jerk, Davies, and I never want to see you again. Here's your stupid, heavy, fake necklace. I hurled the necklace at him, and then I angrily stopped the car and found my own way back home. Breaking up with Davies had taken a toll on me. I refused to go anywhere until I got my hair back. Every morning, I'd look in the mirror hoping to see some improvement, but there was none. Mom had to drive me to several top hospitals. Mom, 
The hair follicles are completely damaged. I'm afraid there's nothing we can do. Over time, I had to learn to live without my hair. I became reliant on wigs, wearing them to every fashion event and show. Nobody could tell the difference. One day, after walking the runway for the New York Fashion Week, I received a call from a strange number. I excused myself to pick it up. Hey, babe. It was Davies! Don't even think about it. If you don't want your secret exposed... I'd rather eat rocks than be scared of you, Davies! Really? I wonder what everyone will say once they find out you've been lying to them about your hair. What do you want? Spill it! $500,000. Delivered to me in cash. What do you need $500,000 for? It's none of your business, princess. I'll send the location to you, and I expect to see you in an hour. He hung up the call before I could say anything, and I headed back to the red carpet with a fake smile. When I finished with the paparazzi, I called my manager for the money. I went to the location with it. When I met Davies, I noticed he looked different. Where's the money? Tell me what you need it for. He looked around like we weren't the only ones there. It scared me. Quit joking around and give it to me. He snatched the briefcase from my grasp and hurried away. Not even a thank you. I drove away from the scene, angry at him for blackmailing me. But as time passed, I became so preoccupied with shoots and interviews that I completely forgot about him. Then school resumed, and I was swarmed by a horde of obsessed students on the first day. Oh my god, Frida! I want to be exactly like you! What do you use on your skin? Someone suddenly grabbed my arm, yanking me away from the crowd. It was a girl I'd never seen before. She wore enormous glasses. Pardon me, but I noticed you needed saving. <laughs> I did. You're like an angel sent from heaven. Thank you. I'm Mindy, and I'm new here. What's your name? I'm Frida. Glad to make your acquaintance, Frida. You could just say friend, you know. I wouldn't want to profess intimate conversance with your person so early. I just knew she was a big nerd with all that word salad. I nodded along like I understood her. By the way, would you mind showing me around? Of course! As I showed Mindy around the school, we talked about a lot of things and instantly clicked. She became my best friend. One time, we were on our way to the gym when we bumped into Davies, the last person on earth I wanted to see. Well, well, well. If it isn't the princess and her new crony. Don't speak about my friend like that! Can't you leave me alone? Remember, I know your secret, Baldy. Only because I told you. Don't act like it's a groundbreaking discovery you made yourself, pea brain. Hmm. Speaking about pea brains, I have an assignment for you. If it's money to do whatever shady thing you're up to, I- You and I know you've taken more than that from me. What do you mean, taken? I didn't ask you to spend money on me. This is different. I need you to do my school assignment. Before I knew it, he dropped a hefty sack of books into my arms. And as if that wasn't enough, he audaciously brought his face close to mine as he said, Also, my lips have missed yours. I'm sure yours have as well. I'd rather make out with a piece of wood than you. Why don't we check that out? Before I could react, Mindy's arm came from behind me and punched him in the face, throwing him back. She stood in front of me like my knight in shining armor. You Dow Cop! You have no right to kiss a lady against her will! Davy's face went red with embarrassment. He got up, about to attack her, when some students rushed out of the gym in front of us. Ugh, uh, I'll get you for that! As soon as Davies left, I turned to Mindy and hugged her. Thank you. What does Dal Cop mean, anyway? Oh, it's just a silly old English word for a stupid person. <laughs> you could have just called him an idiot. Sorry, seeing the buffoon mess with you made me really mad. I thought about telling Mindy my secret as well, but I decided to keep it to myself. I wasn't ready to lose another friend, and Mindy was a great friend. I took her to all my fashion events, and we raided my closet together whenever she visited the house. I like this! That's my mom's signature diamond gown. It's the only one in existence. Ooh, sounds expensive. I'll put it back. Well, you can have any other clothes you want. I gave Mindy a makeover, and when we showed up to school that morning, everyone was drooling all over us. The school year came to an end, and I received an email from a famous fashion brand asking me to model for them and inviting me to their show in France. A million dollars every month? This is the request of a lifetime! I invited her on the trip, and together we began to plan for it. But one day, I got the most shocking news from the fashion brand canceling their offer. They claimed I had sent them an email offering my spot to a model named Elaine Holt, 
whom I had never met. Someone was obviously attempting to sabotage me. This has to be Davy's handiwork. He's the only one with access to my emails. I headed home and gave mom the news, leaving out the part of Davy's blackmailing me. And she gave me a brilliant suggestion. You should go to France. If the organizers see you, they'll want you back. I quickly packed up my suitcase and flew to France. The model show was that night, so I styled myself in a pretty red dress and showed up at the event. And you wouldn't believe who I saw. It was Mindy, dressed in mom's signature diamond gown. She was without her glasses and looked so different. And she was with Davies. Anger filled my body as I walked over to them. If it isn't the two little thieves. <laughs> Took you time to finally find us out, huh? Pretending to be your friend was so exhausting. And all that English was hurting my mouth. Also, thank you for the gown. So you're together? Together? No, she is my sister. I... I don't understand. Suddenly, a woman who looked exactly like Davies walked into our conversation. Frida, it's nice to meet you again. We've never met. Uh... We have, child. Years ago, when your silly father gave that testimony against my family in court, stealing everything from us, we went into debt, and Elaine here came up with the brilliant suggestion of Davies dating you. We're going to steal everything from you, just like you did to us. <laughs> Mindy was Elaine? That was when it dawned on me. She was the one who stole my deal. But Davies was losing his grip, so I had to step in. You know, I'm still not over that punch you gave me. Oh, get over it, big head! I blanked into pure rage and attacked Mindy. We both landed on the floor, drawing everyone's attention. In the midst of the fight, Davy stepped in and pulled off my wig, revealing my bald head to everyone. Everyone, Freda is an imposter. That silly girl attacked my child for confronting her about her lies. Throw her out! I was thrown out of the event, and I flew back home in disgrace. When I got home, I was surprised to find Dad. When he saw me, he opened his arms for a hug, and I ran into them with tears in my eyes. Oh, Dad, I've missed you so much. I've missed you more, honey. I was so overcome with emotions that I started spilling everything that happened. Those criminals finally found us. This is all my fault, honey. I'll fix this. Meanwhile, word of my fake hair went viral. Companies were canceling invitations to me. I couldn't go anywhere without being followed by the paparazzi. But one day, Dad came up with a plan. Honey, I need you to find a way to make Davies or Elaine confess on tape to their crimes. That night, I called Davies for a meetup with the pretext that I wanted to apologize for my family. Finally realized your mistakes? Yes, and I'm sorry for everything my family did to yours. Ah, uh, saying the words to him was so difficult, but I needed to put on the facade for just a short while until he confessed. You're not upset about me blackmailing you? And Elaine, posing as your friend to steal your spot in the model show. Bingo! You know what? I'm angry, and you and your sister can eat dirt for all I care! My switch in attitude startled him, and I smiled as I walked away. As soon as I got home, I gave Dad the recorder, and the next day, he came into my room with big news. Davies and his family have just been arrested. I threw myself against him in a hug, and Mom suddenly walked in with a remorse written all over her face. I have something to say. I'm sorry for the way I treated you, darling. I'm sorry for taking your father away from you. Will both of you ever forgive me? Come here, baby. Dad opened his arms wide, and Mom joined in the hug. The news of Davies and Elaine's arrest spread quickly. Suddenly, I began to receive modeling offers again. My fan base grew, and everyone felt bad for how I was blackmailed. Bald models reached out to me, giving me encouraging words. I confidently stopped wearing my wigs and began to appear to more shows in my natural state. I even received several awards, proceeds of which I donated to charity. I dedicate this award to everyone like me who is still trying to come to terms with their real self. There was one thing I learned in all of this, and that was to love myself no matter my flaws. I wasn't made to be perfect. I was made to be me.